So just going to do a uh, quick video on for loops essentially, just just a practice video on for loops. So I did one before and a for loop is a loop that terminates after a predetermined, I'm not sure how to spell, predetermined Determined. That's where I'm going wrong. Predetermined amount of loops. I dot e dot. We want to run the same code 50 times. So we declare that we want to run a loop 50 times and then run it simple enough okay so i don't know maybe i want to play a game i want to do a thing let's say let's say a game okay so we'll say game game score equals okay and let's say play a game for i Oops, for turn in range 0 to 28, we'll say that the game score on average increases by 1.7. Okay, so we'll say that game score um, dot append. Um, hmm, I, need, I need actually... Game score list. I actually need a list first. Whoops. What is going on there? I am just not hitting my things. We need a game score list and an actual score. So sorry about that. Game score is equal to zero. But game score list dot append game score. We'll see. So we'll just we'll keep a tally of the scores here. Sorry, that took a bit of time. And we'll increase the game score each time by what was the average 1.6 i don't know we'll say that it increases by average um on average by 1.6 each turn okay so we start at zero then it becomes 1.6 1.6 more and the game score will increase and each increase uh, will get appended to the list and we'll see how the game runs let's just check this there might be an error yep I knew there would be. Um, that's because that needs to be in capitals and that should run now. If not, we'll just see what the errors are. There we are. And then let's print outside of the loop. Print game score list. Bear with me and I'll explain all this. There we are. So essentially what we have done we've declared a list and we've declared a variable of type int and we've decided that for for each turn in the range 0 to 28 so for 28 turns we want the game score to increase by 1.6 every turn and we also want the new game score that results from that game turn uh, to be added to the game score list okay so the first one will be 1.6 the second will be 3.2 and i think we should have 28 items in there i can just find that out print len game score list it should be 28 yep and essentially here's our predetermined amount of uh, loops that's 28 if you start the range at zero it'll be 28 obviously if you start at one it'll be 27 and basically how range works is it starts with the first uh, index item so turn is equal to this to begin with and then each time this loop uh, executes turn is then equal to that plus one and then the second time it'll be that plus two etc etc and it will do this until this value then becomes 
this minus one. I I think that's how it works. We could you can test that on your own, but yeah, essentially it'll do that uh, to that minus one. It'll start at index zero and go up to index twenty seven. So we'll do it twenty eight times, even though the index that it goes to is twenty seven because it starts at zero. Okay. Oh, sorry if that was confusing, but I had to explain all of it really. And yeah, as you can see here, here's all the game scores, 1.6 at a time. Not sure what's happened here. Don't really care very much. That's probably just a Python peculiarity. It's more or less 1.6, more or less one point, so I don't really care at all. And then, yeah, I'll show you another one. So we'll say for i in, oops, for i, so for iteration, for item, in game score list print item okay now the problem here is we don't know what turn number this is okay and if i put turn number item it'll say turn number 1.6 turn number 3.6 so if i don't want just the value of each thing inside of here. If I want uh, to go through each index, I have to go for a turn in range zero to len game score list. And if you remember, we actually printed the length and it's 28. So we're actually just doing this, but uh, by using the list name, I'm getting the length of the list. So the range will go from zero to the length of the list. So we'll execute 28 times because that's the length of the list, providing that the first range number is zero, okay? And what we do here is we're getting the indexes. So we can actually print, this is turn number, da -da 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 -da, whatever the turn number is, don't really care, plus string value of turn, and this will print out this bit of string plus the turn number. And then I'm gonna print out the item. Now, because this isn't this isn't iterating through the game score list, it's just iterating a number of times equal to range zero to the length of the game score list. I actually have to get the item at the index, but that's fine because I can do that. And it's a lot less complex than trying to get the index by this means, okay? So we'll say turn like this. And now we get the turn numbers. Oh, that's totally wrong. STR turn plus one, it's part of me. It's because it's going through the index numbers. We'll do that again. And here you've got the turn numbers and you've also got the score. Okay, so I could actually put score is and we'll put plus str of this. Yeah. And it tells us the turn number and the score. So yeah, we knew that the game would have 28 turns, so we had a predetermined range. And then when we wanted to look at each turn and answer each turn's um, turn number and each turn's score value, we had to go through range zero to length of the list. Yeah. And in order to get the actual score for each turn, we had to get the index here doing it this way it's not impossible to do but i won't show you how to do it because it's a bit more advanced and it's just over complicated you don't really need to learn that as such okay so that's yeah that's a little something you can write up there now let's say we want a game where this is something a bit more complex here i mean this is more or less how four works if you can wrap your head around this and make something similar You've more or less understood for what I'm about to do is going to be a little bit more complex. So I'm going to imagine a game where two people play and instead of keeping track of the scores, 
uh, we want to keep track of whose turn, who took the turn. Okay, so we'll start. We'll we'll call the two people, Jenny and I don't know, Jenny and Andrew. So we'll say players equals. Uh, we'll mix it up a bit actually. We'll we'll call her Jemima. Should we just call her? We'll just call her Jenny. It doesn't really matter. Jenny and Andrew. Okay, so we've got the players, Jenny and Andrew, and we've got um, turn number, which we'll just put turn no equals zero. Oh, um, yeah, we'll say zero for now. We'll say zero for now. And we'll put four turn in range. We'll say zero to 50. So it should do it 50 times. We'll say that if turn equals equals turn number um we'll actually say well actually i need another list so turns call it game turns game turns and this will actually keep track of the uh, turn history so we'll say if turn is equal to turn number so this will be true on the first one, comes to turn number zero, and the first item in the range is zero. Then do something here. So I'm actually gonna take my game underscore turns, and we're gonna append players zero. So from index zero, which is Jenny, we're gonna append that to this. Because Jenny takes the first turn. Now this is a two-player game, and you don't get two turns in one go. So it's your turn, then it's the next person's turn, then it's your turn, then the next person's turn. So the first turn will be Jenny's, the second will be Andrew's, and the pattern will turn like will continue like that. Okay, and we'll put L if turn is equal to turn number plus one. There's a couple of things we have to do. We have to first append to game turns. Players, once again, and index one. If you don't understand this, don't, as I say, don't worry too much. It's just a little bit more complicated. And we shall say that turn number is now equal to turn plus one so the first when this executes at first turn number will be equal to zero right and turn will be equal to zero on second turn turn will be equal to one and turn number equal to zero so turn will be equal to turn number plus one once turn number is equal to turn plus one it'll be equal to two but then when the loop starts again this turn will be index two. So this will execute and it should hopefully pan out that way. Let's find out. Let's see if it works. Might not work. You know, I could have absolutely failed here. So we'll have a look inside of game turns. And um, what would you know? Jenny, Andrew, Jenny, Andrew, Jenny, Andrew. So it's worked. Okay. I'll put this in uh, GitHub and you guys can follow this at home. So, let's say I want to print out, this is turn number one, and the player is whoever. We'll put for turn in range zero to length of uh, game underscore turns. I'm not sure why this is an auto uh, auto tabbing. I mean, it doesn't matter massively. Just would be nice. What are we doing? Oh my god, I have completely forgot. Okay, so we're gonna print. 
this is turn number just like we have here so we're pretty much just going to copy and paste that word for word more or less because um well essentially we can and uh, we should reuse that bit of code there it's exactly the same because i've used the same variable number here i've just it's just so that you can see that you can kind of make for loops out of games in this way and then the next thing we're going to print is the player is da -da -da -da, plus str of um game turned turn like that Yeah, and this should print out the turn number of uh, this game from the game turns list and the player for each turn. And here we are. And this way we can see it, you know, just a little bit better. And that's really all there is to uh, these for loops. I mean, there is more to them. I could make something really complicated that prints out really nice, pretty patterns, but. I think I'll leave the complexity at this for now, uh, just so you guys can get your head around the concepts. And yeah, I'll, I'll fill this in with comments so people can see what's happening. But yeah, more or less, these four loops just they just allow you a set amount of uh, of loops, a set amount of iterations, a set amount of times that you can execute the same bit of code, or as you've seen, uh, you can iterate for every single item in a collection so the list such as game score list and do something for every single iteration anyway hope you enjoyed thanks for watching